NIT, we were a Texas by NIT, but we were living here in Austin, so um, I'm in Central Texas. Um, oh, and I just wanted to mention really quick that our next issue will feature a um, story about domestic abuse, uh, self-social services, and how they're responding to cases. It will be out next Friday, and it will be really good. I'm really, really happy to be here, and I want to call out some of the Central Texas Media groups that I over here, um, and I know I'm going to miss some. And if anybody's here and wants to holler out, please do. Um, Channel Austin, of course, which is our host here. Um, and radio, we have here in Austin, we have Co op, we have KAZI, we have KVRX, KMFT. Um, our local press is very rich. <coughs> African American community, we have NACOA which is a progressive weekly newspaper and the villager. In the Hispanic community, we have Arriba, ORC, La Pensa. Um, and I also want to mention that because this is Austin, we have a lot of great zines. And I guess, you know, that zines are where a lot of people start using their voices. And um, we're very fortunate in that respect. Um, Austin Days is a cultural paper here. Um, they a great website. Um, we had the Austin Triangle for many years, which was a gay and lesbian magazine, and that's a voice we miss very much in the community. Um, in the internet, we have we have so much internet here. Um, one thing we are fortunate to have is austinbloggers.org, which is a map blog, kind of directs everyone in Austin to um, the many, many, many golf blogs that we have, and we have a lot of political blogs. Bernard Report, being one, thank you for another. <coughs> Um, not to mention, just to call out a few of the arts organizations here, Women in Their Work, African American Arts Technical Resource Center, Circle of Life, Austin Circle of Theaters, Austin Gay and Lesbian Film Festival, Dance Group, Theater Groups, and the political stuff. We just have so much going on here. Um, it's a great place. So we're very fortunate. We have many, many voices, and uh, we're generally a progressive area. We're full of folks who support these organizations and attend events. Many donate, which is great, and that's a big issue amongst all of us folks. Um, and many, many volunteer. It's wonderful. Um, we have a great grounding in the idea of multiculturalism here. We have a great group of voices, and you know, we use that hopefully to educate the folks here. Um, of course, we have a lot of challenges, um, like everyone else. And of course, I think one of the big things that's happening everywhere is the pressure for being solely responsible for um, serving underserved communities. As the mainstream media gets bigger and bigger and bigger, um, and the you know regulations like the FCC's uh, relaxation of corporate media ownership rules, excuse me, the community has to work harder than ever, um, and that's happening. But uh, talking about organizations like. I know many of us are, you know, launched into a new territory when they started their organizations, especially small ones. And perhaps we're not trained in what we do. <laughs> and I don't know if we could be trained in everything that we do. Budgeting, organizing, writing, and knowing the web, and fundraising. Um, but I'd like to uh, mention a couple of nonprofits that offer training here in Austin. I think that that's a really, really cool area for nonprofits <coughs> media groups that you know you should focus on and find out about is people that train nonprofits and people that can help you put together your your uh, operation and for instance uh, right here uh, well channel Austin trains folks in video production I did a video myself there when I was 23 mm -hmm. it was a music video for my band <laughs> it was so fun you know I never did get for a train but just to Think that that's available here and that people can do that. Um, we also have the uh, Metropolitan Austin Interactive Network, which is a helps with web production. It's a big <coughs> website that tries to pull together a lot of different aspects of the community on the, on the internet and help people to do that better and better. Um, also, there's an organization, I don't know if you guys are here or not, Green Lights. Anybody heard of them? Green Lights is a nonprofit training group and you can get uh, training in budget, you can get training in technology, and you can even get your board members trained, which can be really good. <laughs> um, and 
And you know, this, this community has just got tons of resources, and part of the problem that we have is just making people aware of the resources. Um, I mean, just, this probably isn't very well related, but my daughter is here on campus today, she's 11, and she's attending a um, session on training in video production um, by a great filmmaker, Ann Lewis, who has uh, done a lot of wonderful nonprofit uh, filmmaking. So that kind of thing is available, like I said, making people aware of it, connecting people to all these things together here in Central Austin. There may not be enough crossover there. There may not be enough communication. Um, since, as the report says, com community media is decentralized by nature. You know, how do we how do we come together? Um, and I thought I like the idea that the report mentioned about uh, infrastructure sharing, such as co-location and <coughs> organizational mergers. You know, sharing business operations. And I don't know if people are doing that, but I was very excited to hear about that. Um, and making the public aware of missions, um, of your mission, and how you can serve the community, and how people can come to you and find your services and engage, you know, learn and use video production, use internet, um, is you just have to get that word out there, and that's when it comes in handy to make sure you know that you're leveraging other media groups and all. Um, I just talk about what the observer does for a minute just because that's what I know. Um, for instance, Co-op and the Texas Observer have an ongoing uh, trade relationship. We have, uh, we, we do printouts for them and they do announcements for us. And I, I think there's a lot to be found, you know, between organizations and trading, getting the word out. Um, we uh, also trade blog links with a number of sites. We have an ad trade with KLRU, and we get a TV spot for that. It's great. Um, and we just have ads for nonprofits and events, and sometimes we trade on that. Um, so, uh, uh oh. <laughs> oh, and I just wanted to mention too that something that's worked really, really well for the Observer, and that we uh, just managed to make a whole lot of. Uh, of, uh, connections with is our email blast. We do a big blast. We collect emails very faithfully, and we send out big blasts on a regular basis about what we're doing and trying to connect with folks. And recently, we've begun doing a lot of research. Putting, you know, we have, for instance, we have <coughs> this domestic abuse issue coming up. We've been looking all over the state to find names of domestic abuse shelters and folks that are involved with that issue. Putting them on our list. They get that message too, and hopefully that means we'll get information back from them. And you know, the whole issue that our reporting will get out there and help these people on the grassroots level do their work. And um, so, and yeah, I just wanted to mention too that while the observer is not, we're not really an access group. We're a magazine. We, you know, we have, we assign stories. We select our stories very carefully. Um, so we really don't take submissions, you know, off the street. Generally, once in a while, someone comes in and says yes. Um, what we do, and I think you know, it's important facet, an important facet is that we get the information. You know, we collect the information, and hopefully, we when we disseminate it, you know, in our in our investigative reporting, it's picked up by people and organizations that can use the information. And I'll just uh, refer back to the uh, South Texas speakers uh, who was talking about the border wall. And we recently had a border wall story. Right. Um, Melissa Del Bosque, who's one of our writers, has uh, went down to the border and talked to a whole lot of people about um, about where they're building the wall, which is very weird. And they're building it across, you know, people's land and then stopping it at golf courses. Amazing, right? <laughs> and she couldn't get any information out of Homeland Security, but the story through our website, through our um, email blasts, hit the general um, viral world out there, and we've gotten a whole lot of feedback on it. We've gotten people that want to interview Melissa, Democracy Now, interview her. Um, so it's a way, I think, for us that this really works to make these community connections. We have so much to learn, and I'm really excited about what we are going to do here today. And um, so, 
Thanks, sir.